It is that nice here that we've actually decided we're going to come back to Samui and we're going to stay here because this bit is amazing. My honest opinion, don't stay here. If you're coming to Koh Tao, such a beautiful island. It's absolutely stunning. Don't stay in. It's like hippie paradise. Literally hippie paradise. I've never seen so many white men with dreadlocks. <laughs> Everything was put together with driftwood and everybody <laughs> was just on magic mushrooms. <laughs> Be found? Great place to swim. Look, no one here. If you are like us and a lot of other people, you like to do a little bit of island hopping. So <laughs> this is uh, a video about comparing the islands, what to expect, how long to stay there, what the differences are, all the rest of it. I'm Elise, this is Lawrence, and this is our baby night. We're traveling the world. But we're going to be doing things a bit differently. We're going to be traveling in a month. And coming back to the UK and working a month. So we're going to be traveling month on, month off. Until this little one goes to school in a couple of years. We want to see if it's actually possible to travel the world with a toddler in tow. So subscribe and come along for the journey. We've just touched down. It looks like... I'd imagine Hawaii to look like the airport's beautiful, isn't it? It feels very, very tropically. Come with me, I'm not really asking, we'll get away. As soon as we touched down, we could sense the change in pace. It was so dramatic because we'd just come from the speedy Bangkok where everyone's in a rush. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just mad. Uh, vendors shouting at you, there are the tuk-tuk men, everyone's like in your face in Bangkok. This is just a completely different feeling, it's like so islandy. I love it. There's like flowers and greenery everywhere, everywhere's like real Thailand island. Love it. <laughs> Lawrence is looking at me like, what are you doing about? It's beautiful. Obviously, everyone's attitude on the island will completely change. Everyone's more chilled, laid back. There are less people on the streets, fewer shops, and more smiles. Yeah. You could literally, it was like going... Standing we were so surprised at what you got for your money compared to Bangkok. We had a lovely little bungalow. It was right by the beach with a restaurant on the beach front and like beautiful lush greenery and gardens all around it. It's a perfect introduction <laughs> to our life. It was. We just arrived in Samui and we've got to our hotel. We are staying in Chiang and the taxi cost us about 500 baht to get here and they have like an airport transfer desk thing in the airport so we just went with that yeah they, uh, they said oh 20 minutes away it is literally five minutes up the road so it's definitely not worth 500 baht but it is what it is we're gonna go to 7-eleven and get some mosquito spray because it is they are right. wild out here the popular places to stay on Koh Samui are all very different you've got Chiang, very buzzy lots of bars lots of restaurants lots of clubs even and then you've got Chalong in the north which is really tranquil, quiet, not many people, no traffic, and just some nice resorts and restaurants. And we're gonna show you all of them. So stay around to the end to see our favorite place, which shouldn't be missed if you're coming to the island. Now we are in Lamai. So Lamai is in the southeast. It's like Chiang, but a little bit less buzzy, and it's not open till as late. But it's still got all the shops, bars, everything like that, but just smaller. Um, and it doesn't have the central festival like Chiang does. If you are staying in Lamaya and you think that beach looks a little bit ropey for me, there is Silver Beach, which is just up the road, and that's where we are now. And it's got beautiful big like Flintstone rock formations, and the beach is like white sands, and there's restaurants and hotels on the beach. So we decided to go to Pig Island. It's very choppy. But we'll take you with us. Hopefully it'll be worth it and hopefully we make it. Yeah, yeah, No, no, it's what noise the piggies make. Oh, they go. Go. <laughs> Our captain's just told us it's like this. <laughs> One of my favourite parts of Koh Samui was Pig Island. Basically, there's pigs there, like in the Bahamas, like in Suma. This is like Thailand's version. Well, when we talk about comparing the islands, this is the best 
day trip excursion from Koh Samui. Oh. If you could choose one day trip, it would be this one. I would do it in a day trip from England. <laughs> <laughs> This is payback now. <laughs> so graceful. So, <laughs> so when you get here, it's 50 baht per person to help maintain the island and the pigs. Oh, there's pigs! Come there! You have to pass it over there. There's pigs yeah. in there! Oh, and also over there. Oh, yeah, they're asleep. When you get here they have a restaurant over here which is really well priced it's like the same as like anywhere else in Thailand basically it's like 100 baht 120 baht a dish around 50 something like that so we're sitting having a drink if you are interested in actually watching our vlogs um, on Koh Samui Kotel and Koh Phangan, I'm going to put an extra playlist link that's going to be of all of the vlogs that we're talking about today. There'll be them in full, so you can go back and watch them if you are interested in going there specifically. Now, Chaweng, most of you will know where it is or what it's about. It's basically the buzziest place on the island. Lots of bars, lots of restaurants. There's even a couple of clubs there that stay open till four or five o'clock in the morning. So if you're gonna stay there, be prepared for it to be very touristy, very young, um, but lots to do. And the atmosphere is very, very buzzy. So this is Central Samui. This is where all the main shops are. This is where you get your swab test done if you still have to do that while the time you're watching this video. Um, and there's also lots of stalls, loads of food. This is like, a very beautiful semi-outside shopping centre basically and it's very western so as much as it has the local stores it also has all of like the brands Uniqlo, Starbucks, loads of like international brands too. This shopping centre is so friendly for pets and kids they literally have little strollers that you can put your dog in or whatever you've got animal. Ferret. <laughs> put your ferret in. They have so much stuff for kids here to keep them entertained. They do little events for them. So yeah, it's lovely. It is that nice here that we've actually decided we're gonna come back to Samui and we're gonna stay here because this bit is amazing. We've moved down the road about two miles down the road and we're at Fisherman's Village in Beauport. It is so nice here. This is where we should have stayed. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. The shops are beautiful and cool and unique and the restaurants and the bars are cool and like all like nicely done and like just fishermen -y and <laughs> love it, love it. So it's less like singer beer vests and more like straw hats and tie-dye stuff. As we're filming this, we're near the end of our Samui stay and we're going to some other islands. It is that nice here that we've actually decided we're gonna come back to Samui and we're gonna stay here because this bit is amazing.
You can clap, Nana. So with Koh Samui, it took some getting used to because it was a lot slower paced than Bangkok. So you kind of had to, you kind of had to go out and be proactive, go and find your adventure. Where Bangkok, it was on your doorstep. It's a great entry level into island life. So you're slowing down, but you've also still got the large shopping centers. You've got all the shops. If you need anything, there's a huge uh, hospital on Koh Samui. I would say if you're gonna do island hopping, Samui is a great place to start. For sure. Because you're still comfortable. We'll get onto Koh Tao and Koh Panyang, but it's very different and you kind of got to take what's given to you. Yeah. You can't, if you need nappies, you can't just go out two minutes up the road right. and find them. You have to go out, plan your journey, which shop on the island selling them, which shop's yeah. open. You might have to go past three or four that are closed to get to yeah. one. So very different, but Koh Samui, especially as a family, yeah. it's great. Yeah. This is one end of Sari Beach. We're right at the end here. You'll see the road that we're just about to walk down is literally full of diving chops, diving scores, diving equipment, and full of divers like this one. If you haven't seen that video, go and have a look. Part of the ocean now. He's a fish. This road has a bit of a feel of pee-pee, but it's much bigger. Although there's people walking up and down, you do have to be careful because mopeds come up and down here sometimes quite quick. So be careful. On the beach side is loads of restaurants, and bars. Surrey Beach has a bit of a backpacker vibe, especially up this end. You'll find there's some really cheap accommodation, you can eat for really cheap where you would go travelling, backpacking or on a budget, but it's still beautiful. This is where we have been spending a lot of our time on this beach. There's a little area of rocks there which is so perfect for kids, it's shallow, it's so clean and here is the band's diving equipment place and this is where we got our paddle boards, really reasonable. We had it for like half a day and it was like 200 baht each for a paddle board, a kayak and a snorkel. And you'll see most people when they come here they have a bike and they just come down to the front, park it up and then you can walk along wherever you want. As you go past Pan's Diving there's a couple of like nicer restaurants like this one. So now we're on Koh Tao, the difference in the beaches was quite a lot actually. Mm. It is, everything is basically more condensed. Whereas on a Koh Samui beach there might be like a couple of little bars spread about. Koh Tao is like bar, 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 restaurant, 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 restaurant. Everyone's playing different music. Um, it was still surprisingly really chilled for that. It, the sand is so powdery and the sea is warm, clear, blue. It's lovely. So I think it's important that I'm completely honest about where we stay, where we wouldn't want to stay, and why we wouldn't want to stay there. Now, Mayhard is, it's the first port of shops, of retail, so you can get everything here. Bikes, there's banks, there's every, you can stay here. But, in my honest opinion, don't stay here. If you're coming to Koh Tao, it's such a beautiful island. It's absolutely stunning. Don't stay in Mayhard, unless there's a specific reason, like stay at a specific scuba diving club, or for whatever, and you've got friends here. There are so many beautiful places on Koh Tao, away from the pier. Well, I'm not saying you won't have a good time, I'm just saying the places we're visiting now are so much more beautiful than this place. If you're on Koh Tao, it's a beautiful, relaxing island, but you want your stay to reflect that. However, this is a place if you need a pharmacy, if you need to exchange money, if you need the important things, I think the hospital is just next door. Obviously, to come in and out of the island, you come through it. So, definitely worth a visit. Staying here, not so much. Sherlock, everything's really cool here, laid back, little dive bars, beach bars. The road just feels much more spacious and pretty and flowers and how you would expect Koh Tao to be. What, Just there? Look at the beach. Okay. As you can see, it is ridiculously high tide at the minute, so the beach is like this big, but it will go right the way out. The water is crystal here. The sand is more powdery. The sand is a lighter colour. The water's a nicer colour than in May had, and the boats are considerably smaller. So this is like typical of a Koh Tao beach, really. Beautiful. It is so hot today as well. The vibe's still very chilled, mm -hmm. but in a cool kind of way. Yeah. Like there are still quite a few people because there are less beaches, but everyone's everyone's consciously chilled. Yeah. 
until it gets later on in the evening yeah. and then they turn up the music and the music's loud anyway but they turn up the music and that's when the party starts happening yeah. on the beach this is where all the nicer resorts the villas everything that's a little bit um you know four or five star a lot of them are in sharks bay by far the most difficult place to find <laughs> we've been up down roundabout but we found it in the end there is definitely a reason why this is the expensive part of the island look at it right down on the beach there's a resort with huts that you can stay literally on the beach look at the color of this water so again the tide is right the way in so the beach will be much bigger than this as the day goes on and the water is much choppier here so you can see it's a lot more rough but it is called sharks bay for a reason there are actual sharks the black tip reef sharks and whale sharks it will take your breath away when you see your first shark but they are harmless can't hurt you the great thing about thailand and the sea is that there's nothing in there that can hurt you badly obviously you get some sea urchins and things like that but nothing's going to really hurt you so you can come you'll be free to swim snorkel you can chase them they're not going to hurt you but they can get big but if you come down here for like a barbecue night there's a resort here and the barbecue looks amazing seafood barbecue worth a visit just arrived at freedom beach so here there's freedom beach there's the viewpoint and then there's another beach called tatao beach which is down the other way but we asked him which one is nicer and he said without hesitation freedom Lawrence looking like the Virgin Mary covering up Nai on his back. This is a really unique beach. It's literally lined with little trees all along the shore. The water is as clear as clear it can be. Lots of fish Lawrence can already see from the little restaurant that's here. Wow. I've actually never seen a beach like this to be honest. There's so many fish here. It's an Oglas paradise. Can you see it, Bob? Oh sure. Shark. Wow. I've actually never lied on one of these before. I feel weirdly safe. No. So the main differences between Koh Tao and Koh Samui is obviously the size. I mean, Samui is massive for all these different areas. Koh Tao is tiny. It's just more chilled, isn't it, really? Yeah. I'd say it's, it's definitely a younger vibe. But... But you're still with every family. Yeah. It's not full moon younger. Yeah. It's just, I guess the older you get, the more requirements you have. Do you know what I mean? There's You're no stainless stair lifts there, <laughs> right? Yeah, I guess. We could have told me one of those. <laughs> but that's the charm of the island. Yeah. And that is island life. Like. It's proper island yeah. life. I mean, Kota was island life, but it had nothing on Cope oh, yeah. Panyang. That was a different level. Koh Panyan is like... But we're going to show you. Everything was put together with driftwood and everybody <laughs> was just on magic mushrooms. <laughs> but before we go there, we're going to show you the best excursion day trip from Koh Tao. Yeah. Oh, I love this one. Koh Nang Yuan. Yes. Was insane. Where is it? Just over there. At the tip. So if you're on Sairi Beach, you literally look out to sea and right and you'll see two little humps. There's actually three islands there, I think. And they're joined by sandbanks. So we're gonna go and explore, see what that's all about. And I need some water because I'm leaking out of every orifice. This place is called Ko Nang Yuan. Or Ko Nang Yuan. For the Thai speakers out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's supposed to be absolutely stunning. 300 baht per person, there and back to uh, go on a long tail to go and see it. It's basically three little islands connected by a sand strip. And then the viewpoint shows a half thing. Yeah, so you climb this viewpoint. Yeah. I mean, we'll show you at the top. It's one of the most breathtaking yeah. views and you can stay on the island oh yeah if you can stay on the island stay on the island because we wish we would have done that for a night yeah and you can have the beach then because i think everybody gets kicked off at like four, four or five o'clock four o'clock yeah. and then after that it's like a residence only so like can you imagine yeah sometimes as parents you have to be extra resourceful 
this is keeping nice head straight. <laughs> We did it! So, we made it up here. Made it. Super mums had baby on, on the front. And now it's a chubby little munchkin. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, this that is unbelievable. Yes, you are. Oh, very wet. <laughs> Actually, Coe out of the three was my favourite. And I really didn't think it would be. It really was. It was just so chill. Everyone was so We stayed there for nine days. Yeah, we extended and then extended and, and then extended, extended again. again. They were like looking at us going, do you just want to book a fortnight or something? <laughs> yeah. And get home with? Because you're doing... The amount yeah. we're paying for each transaction for the day is unnecessary. Our first stop is Secret Beach. What do you think of the island so far? Um, I love it. It's like hippie paradise. Literally hippie paradise. I've never seen so many white men with dreadlocks <laughs> in my life. Everyone looks like they're, they're wearing their clothes from like 25 years ago. <laughs> They've got like straight, like it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's beautiful, yeah. Oh, massage. massage. These retreats that Copangan offer, they're pretty involved, aren't they? Yeah. You, I think one requirement is you must have dreadlocks. <laughs> Another requirement is that you can't have washed for at least four weeks. Very earthy, very yeah. tree huggy, yeah. very friendly. Very friendly. They're there to try and be the best versions of themselves. Yeah. So Everybody's there for that purpose. Everyone's Meditation. in great spirits, yeah. great mood. It's a really nice vibe. We didn't film too much there because we were just enjoying the, it was like our calm time. Yeah. Um, it really did help. Very, very secret, isn't it? Lots <laughs> <laughs> of a sign on the main road though. Yes. Come on in, you want to get down? So here they do all kinds of foods, they do smoothie bowls which I'm particularly excited shrimp about. Shrimp and bruschetta. Shrimp and avoca avocado bruschetta. Ooh. Wow, that's going to be purchased. I love this place. Okay, nine eyes. Look at the sandies. Do you want to see it? There are so many foods I want to eat. The whole island is chill, but this place is differently chill. They're like whole, I really sound like I belong to Koh Yang when I say this, but the whole vibe is just, what are we going to do for the rest of the day then? We're going to take in all the spiritual, Essences of the island. I'm gonna get pissed. <laughs> hey, full moon, full moon. If you come to Koh Phangan, make sure you buy or bring a very good mosquito spray because there is mosquitoes everywhere. Night and Lawrence are covered in them. I've got quite a few as well. It is right here. Cucumber, watermelon, mint, and lime. What's it like? Disgusting. Is it? Vile. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. Fresh. What's the name of it? Kakula. You're so good for that. <laughs> so the restaurants on Koh Phan Yang are extremely accommodating. Oh, wow. There is kosher, there is vegan, there is anything you could possibly want. Yeah. Is Any there. intolerance? Yeah. on planet Earth, yeah, you'll get it, they you'll... account for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which for such a small island is pretty good, isn't it? But you pay the price. 
So Camp Copangan was more expensive. The restaurants are owned by a lot of foreigners on Pangan. So uh, Italians, loads of Italians. Loads of Italian restaurants. Lots. It was like imported truffle pizzas and we're like, yeah. what? And you pay for it. Yeah. You do pay for it, so they expect, expect to pay a lot more for those restaurants. Yeah. The Russians own loads of bars and restaurants. Yeah. Oh, is that tasty? Is that nice now, Yes? Yes. I've never seen them before. I know. We are in the secret bar. Secret uh, beach in the restaurant, and the food was so tasty. It was, oh, it was, so it was really yeah. weird how tasty it was. I don't know what was going on. Maybe I would had my drink spice because we're in Pangan. Funny if it was mushroom wrap. <laughs> my senses were on fire. It was like this prawn bruschetta. Was That's the best bruschetta I've ever had. Stop it! Is that now? And now. And now we've just walked up the beach. And there's a place called Ko Rahan, which is all like, well, I'll show you. In Ko Panyan, there's a place called Ko Rahim, which is by Secret Beach. Yeah. Inside. You have to go there. Mm. It is unbelievable. It's an experience and a half. Yes. Yeah. They've basically got like 10,000 coconuts that just made everything oh, have coconuts. <laughs> like, coconuts and driftwood. Yeah, and like there's yeah. like massive swings, like it puts all the other swings in Thailand to shame. And it's on like a little pier that goes out into sea. Yeah, it's so it's surrounded mad. by, you're surrounded by sea and it's a restaurant. Oh, yeah. That make it look so easy there. <laughs> Be found? And there's a tiny, tiny little beach next to Cobraham and it's you have to climb down rocks to get yeah. to the beach. But it's basically, you have it yourself, it's like private. And the water is like every on water. <laughs> Mad. You have to go. That's a vibe. We've got a video about it. You have to see it. It's definitely a vibe. We've got videos yet. The links will be in the description. Yeah. If you do want to go, if you do want to go back and look at the, the videos where we go there individually, we, we've got vlogs on them. Um, we'll put a link in the description for the playlist, so you can just go for it, and we'll just click all of the ones that we're talking about. All of the videos that we're talking about today will be in that playlist. So, to surmise, what would your fa well, you, we know your favourite island, Koh Tao, Miss, Miss Tao. Yeah. I would say my favourite island is Koh Tao, but I really did fall in love with Koh Samui by the end. There's something about Koh Samui that feels like home. And I feel like I've got that vibe a bit. I caught that vibe. Because you can't really see yourself living on Koh Tao or living on Koh Kapangan. No, but you could live. But you could live on Samui yeah. very comfortably. Yeah. Uh, that's probably the difference yeah. between all three. Yeah. If I was going to recommend how long to go, if say you had a two-week holiday, I would say spend seven days on Samui, mm. three days on Pangan, yeah. four days on Koh Tao. This place, you have got to come to, it's amazing. There's literally, it's just, you can see, absolutely decked out everywhere. It is unbelievable. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So beautiful, even if you just come here for a drink or to come and have a look, it is so cool. So the restaurant's called Ko Raham and it's part of the uh, Hudson Resort. Definitely recommend this, this is phenomenal. Into water when they hit the ground. 
He said he's calling, the woman's calling out for the man. That's what you sound like, baby, when you're calling out for me. <laughs> Longing for my loins. I can promise you're the only thing I see. Hold my hand and hear the words I say. Close your eyes and let us fade away. Build a secret place for you and me. Let our minds be caught up in a dream